When you subscribe to WROK on YouTube, you never miss a meeting. All right. Good evening, everyone. Chief Moore, how are you doing tonight? All right. Good to see you. All right. Well, I'm going to call tonight's uh, Royal Oak City Commission meeting for January 24, 2022 to order. We're going to begin with an invocation given by Commissioner Douglas, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask that you stand if you can. At the intersection of a rail line and a great American highway, Royal Oak has always been a place of transition and change. Our first hundred years took us from cowbells to broadband, from hitching posts to parking structures, from farms to festivals. Here in the first months of our second century, let's take, to, take some time to appreciate all we've accomplished together. We sit in a new city hall across from a new police station and award-winning urban park. As we speak, children are probably sledding down the hill at the brand new Normandy Oaks Park. And let's not forget those brand new garbage bins. Every day in the last hundred years has brought change to our city. We have seized every challenge and turned it into an opportunity to make our city better for our people and make them proud of what we have become. I have no doubt whatsoever that with that pioneering spirit, our next century will be as innovative and successful as the first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, that brings us to item four, which is the approval of the agenda. Uh, Commissioner Douglas? We have a motion by Commissioner Douglas. We have a second by Commissioner Perouche. Discussion on the agenda. All right, with that, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, motion passes. We have an established agenda. This brings us to item five, which is a report on municipal parking systems implementation as requested by Commissioner Colo, with support from Commissioner Hunt and Commissioner Douglas. Mr. Brake, I'm right. handing that one to you. Absolutely. Okay. So good evening, Mayor Fournier and, and members of the City Commission. Uh, happy to provide a, a pretty detailed report of what's going on in the parking system. If you recall, when we were looking at this system, one of the statements that was made very early on, our old model encouraged people not to park. And what I mean by that is that we estimate 50 to 60 people we're honest about it, but it incentivized uh, the ability to beat the system, to go in, take that chance, and drive off and not receive a ticket. Going with this new system, it, it brings about compliance. Everyone, it's, it's on a, a um, fair system where everyone is treated equally. Because when a car pulls up and a license plate is recognized, that is a parking session. Last Tuesday, I contacted you about a social media blitz that we put out um, on our Facebook page and the like, indicating that we were taking a pause. The parking system had been in place live for a little over a month, and we wanted to make sure that the parking experience is successful and it meets the expectation that we were all uh, made aware of when, when the, the commission approved this, this new system in place. And I think that that part is, is paramount of uh, having the, the good customer service sort of uh, relationship. And since that time, we've, we've gathered a lot of information, but at the same time, those um, concerns that have arisen, that we're addressing them, and that'll make the, the operation that much smoother. Uh, is especially um, as we move into warmer weather and it's a little bit more favorable to be outside, we fully anticipate that there'll be even a greater number of people parking and we want a flawless system. So with that being in mind, uh, I'll credit to, uh, Interim Chief Moore and Judy Davidson that pulled a lot of analytics, which, which I think you'll find interesting, um, to give you kind of an idea. <coughs> So I'll go through this slowly, because I'm going to throw a lot of numbers your way. So the system went live on December 6th. 
And this information is through January 14th. And out of the, the individuals that use the on-street parking, we had little over 52,000 total parking sessions. So this is where someone pulled into a spot and they were in there more than five minutes. If, if someone pulled in and pulled out right away, that, that number is even greater than this. But this is considered parking sessions, so where, where someone needs to pay. Just about two-thirds of the individuals that had that parking session paid the full amount, about 64,000, excuse me, uh, 33,000 out of the 52,000 got it right. They paid for their session, no violation. Then the next group was um, uh, where there was violations that were sent out, uh, and it was a little less than 15,000, 14,400 violations that occurred, again, between that approximate five-week period, if you will. 6,700 parkers used the, the true up. So they arrived back to their car, it was red, they went back to the meter and, and paid up. Um, so that gives us a pretty good indication that it's a pretty robust system and, and individuals are, are using that. So, um, which, which there's good about that, so I will Question. pause. Sorry. So, I just want to make yes. sure I'm understanding. Um, so that 6,000 and change was out of that 14,000 where there was a violation? No. No, that is separate. So that's part of the two-thirds. Correct. Okay. So those, those individuals, they avoided a citation. Gotcha. Yes. And I have one question. Sure. I got to do the math real quick. 33, 43. So if you had 33,000 roughly that <laughs> paid right. and 14,000 got violations, that brings you at 47,000. Where'd the other five go? Well, and there's... Uh, 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 I'll defer to the chief, so with it, it gets tricky with, with all the numbers here, and, and I can email this information to okay. you, so it's not, don't, I mean, don't worry about that, but I'll, I'll allow Chief Moore to, uh, to address that. Okay. And that's 6,000, not 16,000, that true up, or 16,000? 6,000, 6,700, okay. so if I misspoke, I apologize. No, Six, I, I 6,700, uh, what, what we say true up. In that, when we went in to explore the, the program, what individuals, if you recall, it was this time last year that we were looking at this parking system and we had this parking forum and, and Judy David knows this very well, who we helped put that on. That was the number one item that people desired in a system is that no one wants to have to worry about if you go to park downtown to have a dinner or family celebration, you're constantly looking at your watch, having to race out to the meter. And here's the, the ability that they can go and, and take care of that when they show up. Now, there's a little bit of a caveat that I want to bring to your attention, and I don't want to muddle this up too much, but it gets into a policy issue. For those who exceed the two hours, you can't true up. Your time has expired. Cars got to move. And so there are instances where we receive feedback where individuals, they were willing to true up and they wanted to, um, to, to park that exceeded amount of time. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't work that way. So that's, that's just something to, to be aware of. So switching gears, let's talk about the outreach. So on Wednesday morning on the 19th, we did uh, two different efforts. We did a Facebook blast uh, as well, or uh, Facebook uh, a posting and an email blast. Out of that Facebook uh, posting that reached um, 19,000 individuals. Reactions were 259, comments were 226. We had 80 shares, um, and we had there was a link that was on that that um, uh, 1,200 individuals clicked on that. So we we made that information available on that romi.gov forward slash feedback, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But in addition, there was an email blast that was sent to downtown businesses and uh, I think other stakeholders that are on our email list. So there were a little over 2,600 emails that were emailed out uh, and 1,400 of them opened up that email. So this, this information that, that we sent out reverberated into the, the news media. 
What we're able to confirm is that the uh, Daily Tribune, the Detroit Free Press, and Patch, which is an online, uh, uh, published this as a story. Consequently, there was the television media uh, that did interviews and alike and, and for that information that was distributed. And I know WDIV uh, for certain, I think many of you know anecdotally if there was other stations that, that covered that as well. So when we did the, the feedback from, if you recall, like I mentioned there was 1,200 people that opened that up. And the ones that took the time to fill out the form, there was 129 responses and they identified uh, a number of issues. So what, what is the takeaway to all of this? Again, going back to that customer experience of relaying the information of how the system works. We are working with uh, the parking ambassadors, uh, and one of the feedbacks and one of the opportunities that we have is that we're shifting to a system where when you have the violation, you don't look at the red light on the, on the bollard and just drive off. There's nothing on your vehicle. Old school system, we're, we're trained to look at our windshield and what's under the wiper blade, right? So for a temporary amount of time, not to be relied on, but for a temporary time as we're educating people on, on the system is putting together a yellow pamphlet where that's placed under the, the, the wiper blades to say, hey, your time's expired. Here's how you can shore up. And um, uh, again, that, that's part of that outreach. Other items that we're working on uh, that I indicated to you before, ordinarily when there's a violation, you don't pay it, time goes by, time goes by. Then finally, uh, the ticket is considered in default. That the, the current system is 14 days. But we're looking at switching that over to, to 30, uh, which is a little tricky. What's keeping us from doing that? Well, depending on when the 30th day occurs, we don't want it to fall on a weekend. So have that to the benefit of the person that that rolls over into the, the Monday following if it happens to fall on a weekend. Those are just some examples of uh, how we're actively uh, making modifications to improve that, that customer experience. But I want to give you kind of a snapshot of what's going on, what sort of feedback that we've received. And um, uh, I can meld this all in one email and send it to you. You can see all the, the, the specifics of this because I realize I'm throwing out a lot of numbers your way. Uh, but I want to give you a, a sense of what's going on, what are we doing about it, and what is the, the time frame. So right now, you can park for free. Um, on street as well as on the lots until one week from today. Well, we have everything resolved. Uh, that is to be seen and that we will update individuals through periodically the, the, the Facebook posts and, and alike. Um, we remain hopeful about that. So, um, uh, like I said, based on these learning opportunities, so anyone that's using the parking decks realize that's business as usual. So first two hours are free, and then whatever time beyond that, then it's just the normal rate uh, for using the, the parking decks. So I'd like to, um, to have uh, uh, Chief Moore kind of share from, from his data gathering and analytics and, and alike. And again, I would like to thank him for spending so much time and putting together this information that I can relate to you. But if there's any other observations, takeaways that, that's worth sharing with the group. Thank you, Mr. Director. Uh, we, we've taken a lot of feedback and tried to... Hey, Chief Moore, is your mic on by chance? Is the green light on there? Yeah, I got the green light. Okay, can good, you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. We've taken a lot of the feedback that we're getting as far as the parking experience, and we're really working collaboratively with MPS and trying to make this as smooth as possible that we can. And one thing that we've identified that definitely needed to change was when folks received a violation in the mail, the envelope itself was a plain white envelope and it had a Minnesota address on it, so it may appear to have been junk mail. So we identified that early, and we're putting the Royal Oak branding on it, our logo, so that it's clear that it came from the city of Royal Oak. We've also added a red banner across the top, 
And inside that red banner that grabs your attention, it's indicated that there's a parking violation inside and that it requires action. So it, this isn't gonna get tossed in the trash. It, it grabs your attention so you realize uh, something needs to be done with it. As Mr. Brake mentioned, the 30 days is important. Uh, as you've probably seen in the papers, the, the mail delivery has been delayed drastically recently and some other things have come up. So we're thinking of moving from 14 days to 30 days. Gives people definitely the chance to address the violation if they need to before they find uh, larger fines that come from the court. Uh, the other thing we're trying to do is a little more outreach as far as the two hour time limit. That's something that's always been in place for on street parking, but it's something that hasn't been enforced historically. Uh, people could come out, feed the meter continually for two hours, for two hours, for two hours and never move. And the idea with this system is we want the parking on the streets to turn over. So it's important for everyone to understand that once you reach that two hour limit, you have to leave. You can't true up, you have to move. And we wanna make sure that the public understands that. And if you stay there, you will receive a violation. Another thing we've identified is there has been um, some spot misidentification. And so we're working on some clearer messaging and some clearer stickering on the parking sticks themselves so you know exactly which spot is yours. And that's something that's being rolled out also. So everything that we've identified throughout this early period of parking, uh, we're working collaboratively to, to address those to, to make this transition smoother. So, so that concludes this, but if there's questions, comments, yeah, concerns? Can, can you talk a little bit about maybe some of the concerns with the app that we've seen? Um, there's been some, you know, user interface, user friendliness of the app. And, you know, because I think that's a big thing to help, like, with convenience and really, you know, drive compliance, but also an ability to drive information um, and just make it a lot easier. What, what are some of the things you're hearing about the app and is there any opportunity or chance to maybe um, listen to some of that feedback and, and make improvements? So most certainly we've received a lot of feedback on that. That's from, I can tell you from a quality control, we test this. So this isn't just taking MPS's word. Um, you can ask Ms. Davids, who's, who's, who's part of, uh, I, I want to say that she is the uh, director of quality control. And um, so I would like to, yes, we have been made aware of this and there's some opportunities there because you want to encourage people to use the app and especially a concierge, because the concierge service, from what I understand, will true up for you. Again, That's making it very seamless and easy to use. So with that, I'll let uh, uh, Judy Davids to, uh, to describe uh, our opportunities. Yes, uh, I, I, I'm very proud to say my loyalty is to our visitors and to our residents, so I test everything myself. I even learned how to back in park on Washington. I'm not going to tell other people it's easy unless I can do it, and I did it a week ago, and it was easy. <laughs> so, um, um, But the app has... Um, a couple of glitches, um, for sure, and uh, the interface itself isn't isn't uh, isn't as user friendly as I think we'd like it to be. Um, a couple of other people were mentioning, like um, like they find it confusing that Royal Oak has an app, Detroit has an app, Ferndale has yeah. an app. So they're all like a little different. And I was sharing like some of our neighbors' apps and saying, even if our app look, was a little like, if you knew how to use Ferndale's app, you could definitely figure out how to use Royal Oaks. Right. So um, there are definitely some issues with it, not uh, always recognizing your space and that you're there. Those are some things that I've witnessed, but we, we have like a lot of, we got a lot of feedback on how to improve the app and we forwarded those all to MPS and they're, they're looking at them all. And, and I think, in earnest, they're trying to improve it. Okay. Yeah, but so there is, there has been a lot of, like, mostly, de mostly dealing with it, they don't feel it's intuitive or user-friendly, and we're trying to um, point out those things as we see them and let them know. 
So from a staff perspective, we meet weekly. Uh, it's a recurring uh, meeting, and so this is an opportunity as they, they're pretty much finishing up the construction, but there's these, you know, kind of like building a new building. There's, there's a punch list that we have to go through, so we've yeah. identified that and brought that to their, their attention and, and hold their feet to the fire. But, and but make the, sure they're they're resolved. But the point remains is that the system is still like the old system, you still put credit cards and everything in it. So none of that's changed. The app is an added bonus that, you know, is a I don't want to say nice to have, ultimately is gonna be critical for a certain, you know, demographic. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and and we don't have any data how many of those fifty two thousand parking I mean, early on I imagine the app usage was relatively low. We don't know how many people signed up for the app, do we? No, I don't. I don't, know. Okay. I don't have that information. Yeah, in front of yeah, me and I think that the information, the analytics, will will improve. Okay. Yeah, that'd be something interesting too. Like, you know, how do we push out the fact that hey, you have a lot of the violations because people are staying over two hours. Right. You can wherever they're at, you can send them a notice fifteen minutes ahead of time. You're approaching this because we don't want to get the ticket, but you're kind of bend in our arm, you know, if yeah. you don't follow the rules. That, that was like one thing on the app for sure. Like the app, if you're using the app, it'll remind you like if you're going to meet, if you're going to reach your max like two hour limit, it'll send you out an email like 30 minutes, in, 30 minutes in advance and 15, then five. But it needs, I said it needs to say you must move your car. Yeah. Because I think people are thinking, well, I got five minutes to uh, add more time to my app. Yeah. That's not how it works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to move your car, and the text message should tell you, you must move your car, or you'll, you know, you'll receive a violation. So it's things like that, just trying to make the messaging really clear. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I'll go with Commissioner Cole, oh, then Commissioner yeah. Duvok, and then Commissioner Hunt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, Mr. Brady, actually, while we're talking about the app. Um, I, I do appreciate the soccer issues around design and user interface, um, but, but one of my larger issues are the app charging you. I'm, I'm looking at soccer issues here. So there are newer, numerous instances of people being charged after they leave. If they leave at hour one, the app will continue to charge them in an empty spot until the maximum amount of time, and then they get an automatic ticket for being overtime when the car is not there. Um, and I've shared some instances with you and uh, Chief Moore. Um, can you talk about how they're, I mean, that's a software issue. Correct. And then, so I, I want to know about that. And then is a human checking this? You know, shouldn't there be a human checking the timestamp on, you know, are we looking at like the timestamp when it's parked? And when they leave and then issuing the ticket, I mean, what's the process for issuing a ticket like that? I will defer to, to Chief Moore, but I'll add some comments following that, so. Yeah, there's there's definitely a human component to it. Um, the violations themselves uh, get checked by MPS, and then they are forwarded to the city, and our parking enforcement officers put a set of eyes on it to validate the violations, and once they're validated, they go back to MPS and are sent out. Um, mm -hmm. That's how the violations, that's the path they take. Right, so what? in those instances, and this is a conversation you and I have, but it's worth sharing with the rest of the group, when someone receives a ticket and they want to raise an issue, so the ticket itself says, if you're contesting that, you call the court. But if it's a mechanical issue, like the example that you gave, then you're referred over to the, the police department to discuss that. And they have the, the ability, if it's something that we acknowledge, then, then they can waive those, those fees. So the, the hope is that this is not a reoccurring issue. Uh, it's, uh, problems like that should not occur. So I, I guess too, you know, part of my question is, uh, is MPS working on the software? Because I mean, you talked a lot about, you know, we're talking about changing the envelope. That's one of the modifications you talked about. You talked about the mail, about outreach, but that's a software side. I mean, that's something MPS has, like we can't fix that. That's not a communication. I agree. So what, agree. what's MPS doing on that? I can answer that. So what you've described has happened to me at least three times where okay. I parked in a space and the app has continued to, to charge my space. What I was told was that the app, or sorry, the camera never recognized my vehicle leaving. Mm -hmm. I think I'm saying that right. And so um, what they did was they went and they like adjusted those cameras to, so when that happens, it's like an issue between the puck and the camera and they fix it that way. And then of course they reimburse you. They reimburse me all my money. They put money back into my app. If, if 
So does that make sense? That, see, the problem sounds like it's a software problem, but it's actually a hardware problem. Does that sound right to you, yeah. Chief? The well, software is doing what it's supposed to be doing, but the camera doesn't The camera never that recognized left. that my vehicle left. That's Correct. why it continued to charge me. And if, if I can jump in also, uh, when, when these issues come up and arise, and particularly the app issues that have come up, um, MPS puts us in touch with their software engineers that built the programs and are fully aware of them, and they work together with us to make sure that if a problem is identified, they quickly work on it, and they work for solutions and fixes so that it doesn't continue. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are being responsive when, when issues are addressed and brought up to them. Yeah, and they're now, um, they now like meet with me like twice a week or because I have the app, like they have me test spots that they think have problems. So they are definitely working on it, but it, it's, it's more of a hardware issue. I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me, but it, I believe it's a issue. hardware, mm -hmm. calibration issue, there you go. Um, so, so then to stick with that for, for just another second, um, we talked about the concierge service. There, I've also heard, you know, I've, people have had an issue with, if you have the concierge service, you don't get the five minutes of grace period. And I don't know if that is a software or hardware or No, no, it's issue. not. When, when you go in, you're paying for the entire time that you're using that park, parking space from the first minute. Whereas the contrast is that if you're stopped briefly, let's say you're coming home from work and you're, mm -hmm. you're stopping to pick up some food that you ordered from a restaurant. You dash in, dash out, you, you make it in three minutes and 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. You didn't pay the meter, you don't owe anything. But when you're paying it, it goes back to the original time that your car pulled into the parking spot. Yeah. So yeah. I, I thought our agreement at this table, though, was uh, there's a five minute grace period, no, no matter what. I, I don't think we definitely didn't highlight a it's okay if you dash in, if there, you haven't paid yet, but if you do pay, then you th pay. There's more. a difference between what I'm describing. So you're, you're taking a risk there and you're saying, I'm not gonna pay the system, I know I'll be in and out pretty quick, then you don't have to pay. But if you're saying that, that we need to deduct five minutes from every, that, that's not how this is set up yeah. to work. And I would just argue those same people, maybe Commissioner Colo, are also, I don't know that they're overpaying, but they put, let's say, money in and then they leave the spot. You know, so it goes both ways too. You Correct. get the grace period, but they're mm -hmm. probably because they chose that route, they're probably overpaying too as a as a block. I, I guess, and I see I'm, I see a lot of confused faces at the table. But I thought we had decided as a, a body that we had five. We, it's in the contract. We said a five minute grace. We didn't say five minute grace for everyone who hasn't auto paid. We we decided mm -hmm. a five minute grace was appropriate. Is my recollection of that meeting. Well, we can take a look at that, but that's not how it's being implemented. So, you know, yeah. and you you're t think about that when you start to do the math. I mean, you know, are we really talking about that that large of an amount? Yeah. So, software. Well, you know, we're possible. talking about fifty-two thousand parking sessions, right? Fifty-two thousand potential parking yeah. sessions. People and you have the ability of of having that parking space for that entire time that you parked in there. So. If, if I can, that's one of the things I learned, Commissioner Colo, is that the grace period is you have five minutes to find a method of payment. So you have five minutes to find some quarters under the seat of your car mm -hmm. or dig your um, quarters out of the bottom of your purse or find your credit card. But Correct. once you pay, you pay for the whole amount of time. So let's do the best example. Um, you pay a quarter for every 12 minutes. So at 13 minutes, it's 50 cents, right? It, mm -hmm. Are you following that math? You pay for 13 minutes regardless of the, the grace period is built into that um, cake that you pay for those. So in other words, if you were there for 13 minutes, you don't pay for seven minutes of time, you pay for all 13. The grace period is simply amount of time um, that's deemed sort of reasonable for you to find payment. Yeah, which, uh, which I understand, that's how it's yeah. being implemented. I do not believe that that is how, the, I, don't, I don't believe that's the policy behind it. I believe we had decided we wanted five minutes of people to be able to stop. If you stop there, you, for whatever reason, maybe pull over, make a phone call, 
looking at me okay. to get a direction. We'll take a look at it. Okay. You got other questions? Commissioner Deepak. Um, I mean, I, I guess on that issue, it seems kind of, it, it's irrelevant. So if you want to add an extra five minutes, just make the, make the 75 cents go five minutes longer. I don't think it's really adding anything to the policy. You're saying folks need to know their meters run out and have another five minutes after that. Just make it be the amount of time you want it to be. The app actually counts down in real time, right? Correct. And the app can notify you if you have five minutes left. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand what the value is of that additional five minutes after someone has paid for a certain amount of time. I don't, I don't, I don't really get that. Um, that being said, though, when, so when we rolled this out, it was you know after decades of <laughs> parking debate in this city. Uh, Allison showed us all a cartoon from the '80s where Jimmy Carter's packing up to go negotiate a parking crisis in Royal Oak. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> This is not the beginning and not the end of the discussions about parking for us. But we, we had recognized that we don't want to be a city that is known as the city that's super punitive. We also recognize that only like 40% of people were actually opting to pay into the system. So we're building the entire system on the backs of people that were opting in to, to do what they're supposed to do, which is pay for the service. So we, we also recognize that generally folks want to be compliant. They just hate getting tickets. Like folks might grumble about putting money in the meter, but they're super mad when they get that notice. So we wanted a system that made it really easy to comply, really easy to find parking, um, really easy to not get a ticket. So ideally, we're writing fewer tickets, but we're bringing in what we should be bringing in through the, the designated fees for people just paying for their time. Mm -hmm. So there's clearly lots of uh, hiccups here. So my top line question is, are you, you still confident that this system can deliver that for us? Yes. Okay, so we're working out the kinks. So yes. the second question is, we're not the first community this tech has been in. Have they seen these issues before and are these standard growing pains or is this something unique to us and our system? So the systems that they, the presence that at least they have in Michigan, we're a pretty active parking system. I mean, when you talk about 52,000 occurrences over a five week period, it could take, you know, some of these smaller communities a year to mm -hmm. meet that number. So everything is um, uh, exponential. So uh, uh, part of, and as you can imagine, you know, looking at it from their, their business perspective, they want to grow their system. So, and what a better place to, to do that. So this is a partnership in that regard, um, because if they're not successful here, they're not growing the business. Yeah, so, and then that was raised yeah. when we discussed this contract as, yeah. you know, uh, kind of a leap of faith. We know it's a boon for them to be in our city. Sure. It has the potential to provide on all these priorities that we want. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm just checking to see the tech they brought, like the fact that it's not picking up a car leaving a space, that feels like basic. That's, that's the basic nuts and bolts of what we're paying them to do. And that's Is why that we're holding their see? feet to the fire. And, and like I said, uh, uh, Judy's testing that personally and, um, <laughs> and kudos to her, but, but, but that's something that we're um, kind of that old uh, adage, trust, but verify. Sure. You know, make sure it's, it's doing what they say that it's doing. I'm willing to weather the growing pains and, and the storm and, and the public, uh, you know, uh, learning curve. Sure, if, absolutely. If staff remains confident that this thing is going in a direction that's going to get to the place that we want to be. Um, so second, uh, you know, the, the red ring, right? Uh, did we discuss, I don't remember when we discussed the contract. So what, what if someone's color, colored wine? Can it flash? Can it strobe when you're over? Oh. Uh, I believe it does flash red when. Does it? Yeah, it flashes red when you're in violation. Yeah, it's okay, a solid were, color when you're solid. compliant, when you paid. It's solid. Okay. And when it's in the violation. Okay. And what what ability do they have to bake messaging into the app? So when someone is in a two-hour parking space, we want to make it known to them: you have to move this car in two hours. It doesn't. You can keep putting money in here, but it, it's you, in two hours. You got to go. And that's something that we have brought up and will continue to advocate because okay. I, I agree with you because absent that, if you're entirely new and you're driving a long distance, you're, you're not going to know that by coming here. Right. So it, it has to be crystal clear uh, so, to anyone that's doing on street parking. I agree with you. Okay, because I still maintain that the policy of rotating street parking for quick in and outs mm -hmm. is good for accessibility and it's good for our, our shops. and. Uh, it, it's good policy. Like, I don't think there's been any change in that policy. We want to continue to force rotation on the street. Yeah. 
and we can't have an app that's made it even easier to sit there all day. So I, I agree, I agree. So going back to your question about the confidence of the system, so let's mm -hmm. talk about that. As I said before, that, that we'll continue to keep Parker's users, whatever we want to call them, keep people updated. Will this thing be flawless on Tuesday, February 1st? No. Right. It, it's going to take some time. Um, I think the advantage, and one thing that I advocated to all of you, this, there's no better time to do this right now. There's just not that many people that are out because of the horrible weather, and, and so if we can correct those sort of issues. Because when, when we do get into where we're having robust festivals or people are going to concerts or whatever, um, you know, the, the system has to work flawlessly. Okay. Like Winterfest. So. Right. Well, that, yeah, I'm willing to. It's, yeah. There's going to be a learning curve. I'm sure this summer is going to be, you know, we'll, we'll find yeah, more yeah. challenges and identify more things. But. And, and we will have uh, uh, the, the um, parking ambassadors, am I referring to them correctly? They will be here during Winterfest, by the way. So, okay. Um, and then lastly, on, so on the idea of messaging to folks, you know, using the app and using the screen, um, you know, not just saying, like, this is a two hour limit, you're not going to be able to re up after two hours, like, encouraging folks, DEX. Are unlimited and also two hours free. Can we just? I just want to put that in people's in front of people as much as humanly possible. If you if you're making a night of it, park in a deck. You're gonna be. It's way easier for you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you recall, again a year ago when we pulled the information, a um, little less than half do on street parking. The the folks that park in the the decks are about half that amount, and so we're just not familiar with that and to kind of plan out your visit. Absolutely, I, I would agree with you on that, so. I would even think we'd send that in the violation notice too. <laughs> Little PSA, hey, you went over, you're at two and a half hours, you know what, here's a you know, free voucher for two hours mm -hmm. and the two hours free at our parking deck or something. In, in Hamtramck, they, start, they started now in their violations, they include like a, um, like a palm card that has how to avoid a ticket. I think that's a really good idea. Like we've yeah. we've recognized five ways to avoid a ticket here. You know, come on Sunday <laughs> if you're like brunch, or uh, you know, um, come before eleven. Um, park in a deck for two hours for free. Um, Walk. You know, always check your meter stick. If it's red before you leave, make sure you true up because you're in violation mode, and I forget what the other ones, but we came up with five ways to like avoid getting a ticket, and we're thinking about turning that into like a palm card and including that with the violations. That's what, that's a tip we got from Hamtramck. That's what and, they're doing. And, and before, sorry, Commissioner, I just have one question too on that. Do people know and are they informed that this is a camera-based system? Because I think as much as we think and live and breathe parking, because we're always the beneficiary of the complaints, I think of these 52,000 people and of the 33,000 that got violations, they don't know what's going on in the world. And they just show up and they're like, well, if I get a ticket, I get a ticket or whatever. They don't know that they're automatically going to get one. Are we messaging that on the thing, on the machine? We could, but honestly, I don't know if people really care how it works. Just being perfectly blunt. You know, for, for people like me or Judy that, you know, we're kind of the technology geeks that, yeah, it's kind of cool. but. For anyone that travels, if, if any of you have gone on a toll road, they're switching those systems. They're going to a camera base and toll booths are going away. All you have to do is, you know, drive out east or go to Chicago or whatever. The, the, that system is migrating technology over wow. to a pe people intensive to a camera based system. I mean, we, we certainly can provide that and, and if you go to you go to our website and, and type in downtown parking in Royal Oak, then, then you know, there's quite a bit of information that we list in there. And I think it, it talks about how the system works. I'm not dismissing no. that, but... It's no, just I just a, think it, it helps. I mean, rumor has it that in some parts of Western Europe, if you drive a little too fast, they take a picture of you and they send it to your rental car company and then you get it in the mail in Royal Oak on a few occasions. <laughs> um, yeah, just no, strictly no, rumor here. It's, Stri no, it's no rumor. It's, it's no, no rumor? No, okay. No, no. I'm just saying rumor. Um, and maybe some people up here have been, uh, but knowing that there's cameras, you know, uh, on, on the freeways and neighborhoods and stuff like mm -hmm. that is really you know, ensure that maybe those people are a little bit more compliant and when they get a nice car. And it has yeah. like a camera, like I was in Italy and I don't speak Italian and I was very clear to me, 
was I was driving down the highway and I saw pictures of cam cameras and some words above it that looked like camera. That yeah, this was camera enforced. Yeah. And you do get a ticket when you get home. You get a big flash too sometimes. Allegedly. I do I just heard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, sorry. So, Commissioner Dubuc. Sorry. Yeah, is, I, 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 was, you know, I think I want to be clear that you know, the way that I'm going to go to judging the system over time is that compliance is going up and you know, violations are going down. And if both are going up and it's just generating way more revenue, then we actually need to maintain the parking system. And I would consider that a failure. This you know, should be easy and as inexpensive and accessible as possible. So I would say this with the information that, that you know, if we can't measure it, we can't manage it. So we now have good measurements, whereas before, going back to your analogy, only 40% of people pay. Mm -hmm. What are we missing out on? So I would say periodically we should do a, a check-in. And, and even if things are going well, of coming in and saying, how are we doing? Yeah. And uh, especially in this first year, I would suggest, you know, maybe every six months or every quarter that we do a, a check-in and, and I can run by the, the numbers and, and go over that. And, and I think that'll also spur on some policy discussions mm -hmm. if, I'm not saying that, you know, that you should consider this, but if you did want to reconsider the two-hour limit on street, um, you know, that would give you the data there. Right. So... Thank you. Yeah, just yeah. just underscore, uh, just to break your, your idea with the metrics, I think the more we can build not just a dashboard, but the analytics of data that they have, mm -hmm. like of those 33,000 violations, I mean, we should see, people learn, those could be parkers, it's the first time, it'll be their last time, and those numbers should go down. You're always going to have new people come. It'd be interesting to know, like, the breakdown of types. Is it over the two hours, or is it just they didn't true up? It'd be nice to know, um, are these repeat offenders? Like, it's of those 33,000 tickets, it's really, you know, um, 10,000 people that got three violations in a month because they didn't get their tickets <laughs> in the yeah. mail in time. So can and I clarify, that was 33,000 that paid, that were compliant. It was 14,000. Oh, yeah, 14,000. My yeah, mistake. I, I, I don't want the headline yeah, in the two third, Tribune. Two third, yeah, More no. than one half are violating. And, um, I, wrote, I wrote the note. It just didn't connect from my phone to my <laughs> yeah, All right. No so, worries. But of the 14,000, it could have been, you know, seriously, the, you know, I could see somebody going in every day and they get three tickets in that period in a month before they got their first letter or tossed out the letter in the mail. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so I think it's interesting to understand those dynamics as well because especially when a new system goes place, they don't know, they, if they didn't get a ticket on their hood, uh, they might, you know, all that week, oh, this is great, they're not enforcing parking. You know, and then next thing you know, they get eight tickets. Right. I don't know, maybe that's not the case, but that's another yeah. way not just to look at the metrics to make sure mm -hmm. that um, compliance is up, violations are down, and that the system is funded, but also, um, you know, what kind of violations are these, and is there any patterns that inform how we communicate, how we engage, and is it really a 14,000 person problem, or is it a one person, or, you know, 1,000 person problem that are getting 14,000 tickets, you know? Sure, sure. No, point well. Or 14 uh, tickets. Yeah, and so messaging, we, we're constantly thinking of those things, and I, I know, uh, 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 Ms. Davids is, is always coming up with creative. These are things She's the best. That, that, uh, what are the worries? What are the things that we need to make that, that connection so we can live up to Commissioner DeBuck's standards that, you know, what is our tolerance? What is that level at? And what can we do to move the needle? Right. And it's not going to be zero. You're going to get people that willfully you know, don't want to pay into the system. Absolutely. And I'm sorry, you know, that's your mm -hmm. choice not to not partake. You can't just push mm -hmm. the buck on everybody else. This is an equitable system. And if you choose not to, then especially when there's so many other options and I, you know, we're not going to go to bat for you. That if right. we can make it easier and better mm -hmm. and eliminate every excuse and only have it to willful people violating, we're in good shape. Right. Commissioner Hunt, sorry. Thank you. Um, You've answered most of the questions um, okay. through Brandon and, or, I'm sorry, Commissioner Cola, Commissioner um, Dubuque's um, questions. But my concern is that, um, you know, we're less than 60 days in and we're seeing some of the issues that other municipalities are seeing with this, um, with this system. And it, it sounds as if, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're letting um, MPS know when there are issues that are happening. And they're happening here and there and we're contacting them and they're putting us in contact with their software company. Um, given that we are 
this is a new system for us. Is there the ability for them to come out and do a full assessment so that we don't have to keep contacting them each and every time we have an issue or somebody lets us know of an issue? Well, absolutely. So there is, a, and this is where I defer to the, the chief or Ms. Davids, where individuals can indicate concerns directly to the, the parking company. There is a mechanism to do that. There is, and also just to answer your question, Commissioner Hunt, we did ask them to come out and test every, every single space, the cameras on every single space. And as far as I know, they're doing that. Yeah, and we've also... We used to have weekly meetings where we would address things, the progress, the construction schedule, rollout, implementation, everything like that. But we're now having daily meetings, check-ins every single day. There's multiple check-ins, feedback, information sharing. So they are collabor collaborating with us every single day and they are taking all of our feedback. They've had their engineers on scene here with uh, Judy and diagnosing issues and seeing it firsthand. So uh, they, they are making an effort. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you, Commissioner Hunt, that that's something that they should detect and not wait for the users to identify yeah. that. Absolutely. Great, thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Macy. I, mean, I wanna agree with Commissioner Hunt that it feels like we're beta testing their system for them and it seems like that shouldn't be the case. I mean, they should be coming out here proactively and fixing all these problems before we have to right. one by one tell them. I was like, this is taking up all of Ms. David's time, which is, it's not her whole job. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the one question I had, I'm not sure who this is for, is I, I heard a complaint about um, the disability hand, hand tags, or uh, hang tags, and the inability of the system to recognize those. Do we have a solution for that? Yeah, if, if it is a handicapped parker and they have the yellow sticker issued by the state, then there's information on how they can contact us and we can make sure that their parking is uh, free of charge for the city. So that's, that's the sticker on? The, the yellow sticker, okay. correct, on the hang tag itself. Okay. But are you also asking, because there's instances where you could get like a temporary. Right, right. Like move it Let's around. say like you had surgery and you're not mm -hmm. going to need that forever. But so, um, so there's a solution for the permit, but, but that's... I don't know, you're asking a good question, so uh, that's so, something we correct. should check out. So my mother um, is in a wheelchair, she doesn't drive, she has the handicap tag. I'm able to put that number into the app, and then when I park it, it, uh, it recognizes that, 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 that there's a handicap, there should be a handicap factor there. Correct. And actually, well, yeah. <laughs> so you can do it directly in the app, you don't... Yeah, you can put the number right into the app. Okay. Um, okay. Um, maybe something on social media about that would be good. Just a record. And we have had a few instances, albeit, you know, in the, the number of concerns that have been expressed, it's been a, a smaller number, but just the same. It's, you're right. We need to, the, that's an important segment. Um, to, you know, so people understand the system, because the hope is that this is accessible for all. Yeah. Okay, and then um, a couple of things. So the experience that I had uh, was I parked, and then I came back, and I hadn't paid enough, and it was it was red, and I knew to look behind me. Um, but then when I went to true up, it didn't tell me how much I had to true up. So I, I tried once, and it ran my card, and then it was still red, and I had to try again. And that's when I ran my card, and it turned green. But when you go to the machine at the end, as far as, far as I could tell, I couldn't figure out. I wasn't using the service, just my credit card. And I couldn't figure out how much to true up. And they charge you a uh, convenience charge to run the credit card. So I ended up paying like $3 for, you know, I don't even know, 15, 20 minutes of parking, um, which felt frustrating. So I, is that something that's been reported as well? Correct. We've asked them to, uh, I asked them to have an experience where, like, you kind of review, you know, you put in what you think, right? And then it tells you, this is what you told us, is this right? And you have the opportunity to say, yes, run my card, or go back, like I put in the wrong space, or that's not enough time, right? Because it does seem a bit like a memory test sometimes when you're going to true up. Like you have to know your space, you have to know how much time you were over, and it would be like a lot easier if it just assumed that you wanted to pay for the full amount you owe. Because I can't, exactly what you described just happened to me as well, where I 
ran my card. I thought it was just gonna, I was gonna be paying for everything I owed and I ran it and it said, you still owe for like 11 more minutes. So I had to run my card again. So I know, I know what you're talking about. It's happened to me. Everything's happened to me once. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you doing this test before. At least once. Um, and that's one thing, so the mayor was mentioning about say, putting some, out some notice that it's the cameras and you're saying maybe they don't care. And maybe they don't care except I think people are confused about the fact that it's behind you. So a lot of people expect to see that the, the meter that's Correct. responsible for you yeah, is in front of you. Yeah, that's a different issue, right? Well, it is and it isn't because if you if you told them at the at the screen as they're as they're paying or even on the thing to look behind you. Yes, yeah, this is a camera-based system looking at your license plate. I mean, I think there's a couple things that would be useful to know. You have to look behind you to see what right. your violation is. You have to look behind you to figure out which pole number is the right number for you. Um, and also, because it's a camera-based system, you won't find a ticket on your windshield when you come back. You'll, you'll get it in the mail if it's red. So don't, I mean, I think people come back, you're used to coming back to a meter, and you see that it's expired, and you're like, no ticket, yes, and then you yeah. get the race <laughs> off. But so people need to know that if it's red, you're getting the ticket, and you're just going to be extra mad because yeah. it's going to be, you know, when you don't expect it. So I, 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 I agree with the mayor that I think some okay, education on that point would be helpful. <laughs> and then I, 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 well, I would, I'm going to say a point about you, too. And then I you have a point about you. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what Commissioner Cullen was saying about the, the five-minute grace period, I, I'm going to get asked, Ms. Davis, to correct me if I'm wrong, but if you have the app in the concierge service, you never get five minutes free because it knows correct. who you are and it starts charging you the second you pull up. Correct. So if you get the app, you can't run into somewhere and come out in five minutes. You can't pull up into the, um, you know, the post office and run somewhere and drop something in. You get charged because they know who you are already. So the five minutes is only available to people who have not installed the app, and I don't think that's what we intended. Um, so, all right, I think I'm good. Mr. Sure Douglas. So not to throw shade on our fellow communities, but on Saturday I went to dinner in Detroit. Uh, and I've been using their, their app for a number of years, and it turns out that the app was no longer in effect. They have a new app. Um, and the old one can't, expired on December 17th, and this was January, what, 22nd? Um, and uh, I knew nothing about it. So, okay, so, well, I'll just pay at the meter. I'll put my credit card in the, in the kiosk. Only it wouldn't take my credit card. I'd get through the whole process in the cold, entering my license plate number, putting my credit card in. Sorry, this, pro this transaction has been canceled. So then I had the option of going into the restaurant. You can tell how happy I was about this. Um, going into the restaurant and sitting there for like 10 minutes trying to download the new app and pay for my and whatever, and I finally gave up on it. If I get a, get a ticket, I'm going to be mad. But I will say this, I went out and looked on social media and, and the internet, and I didn't see Detroit saying, oh, we're, giving, we're making it free until we fix our problems. So, I, I mean, at least we're doing the right thing here by making it free while we work things out. Um, and I think that's the, the takeaway that people should have. Mr. Pruish. Um, I don't have any comments about the app or the technology or, or any of those aspects because they're over my head. I mean, I, I just don't use an app when I come downtown. I park in the structure. But I think there's two things that we have to continually keep thinking about as we move forward, and it's just basic communication things. And it's the first one is that it's only two, you only get two hours. That's it. Um, that is a huge change in a mindset of what people are used to. And until enough people recognize that, you're still going to be running into an awful lot of people who think that they can somehow stay in that same space longer than two hours by feeding the meter or using their credit card or whatever. So getting people over that hurdle to make them understand that you only get two hours, period, is number one. It's huge. So the more you can communicate that over and over and over and over again, um, this it will reduce the number of people who are angry about all this. And the second thing is also about how if you pull into a space, it automatically, unless you use the, the you know, certain aspects of it, it automatically starts charging you, and you have to pay, and you have to be willing to pay for that. You can't do the old, oh, I'm going to pull up in front of the post office and run and mail this package and, and take my chances that I don't have to put a quarter in the meter, and I'm going to be back and I'm going to be okay. You can't do that anymore. As soon as you pull into that space, even if it's for 10 minutes to, on a phone call, 
that meter behind you or that post behind you is going to start reading your license plate and charging you. So that's another mindset that is completely different than right. the way most of the people are used to parking, not only here in Royal Oak, but in so many other places. They think that there's some kind of, you know, built-in grace period in the system that they can somehow get away with without paying. That's imp it's impossible to do that anymore because that camera is going to read your license plate and it's going to charge you. And if you don't put money into the system, then you're going to get a violation. And that the more we can communicate that, that you just as soon as you pull into that space, the meter starts ticking. And if you don't want to get charged, either you know, make sure you pay for that amount of time or park someplace else like in, a, in the structure. Um, and that's, that's a huge communication, that's a huge mental knowledge level that, that we're going to have to re-educate people about. And to me, that's going to be huge. And I think as soon as people, most people understand that, we'll see a, the number of violations significantly drop. But between the two-hour issue and the, the clock starts ticking as soon as you get out of your car aspect, is the more people we can under, make sure understand that, the, the system work, will work a whole lot better and will eliminate a lot of this confusion and upset about the system. Because it's that they're, those are huge, significant changes. Yeah, I wish yeah. we would have rolled up this out like in June when the days were long. Because we have like a lot of signage, and I think another thing that's kind of like listen to me making excuses here, but I think another thing that's working not to our advantage is it's so cold, and people just do not want to monkey around with watching a video or learning how to use the thing. They're just going to roll the dice like Commissioner Douglas did in. De Detroit. They're going to give it two minutes and then they're done. Yeah. And um, I think as the days get longer and nicer, um, it'll be easier with some of that messaging. But right now, 100%, that's our biggest challenge is some of the nicest features about this um, system people don't know exist, like the chewing up feature. How do we let people know? You know mm -hmm. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I think Commissioner Perush is, is dead on with the two hours. Um, uh, I'd also add on there that um, you won't get a ticket on your hood. And I think if we want to educate people, the best place to educate them is at the point of sale, so to speak, or right there. And it seems to me, I'm not trying to engineer this from the table, but at least in the beginning months, if you had a screen there, a big red screen that said acknowledge, you know, that maximum two hours, you have to move your vehicle, camera enforced, you will not get a ticket on your hood, but you will be issued a ticket for a violation. And if you're parking over two hours, we recommend going to a parking garage. Mm -hmm. And then you hit yes, mm -hmm. acknowledge. And then from there, they don't have to watch a video. They don't, they'll figure it out if they, if they want to, you know, they, hopefully they have enough time if they get there, you know, that grace period, if we define it right, they can say, oh, I'm leaving. <laughs> you know, you don't want to have someone pull in and get a ticket when they pull out three minutes later because they decided that a parking garage is a better option. Um, but I think right there, two seconds, they can read. Um, bright red screen, you know, um, and then once they hit acknowledge, it takes them right into the main platform to, to, to cover their parking. Yeah, we've been That's trying to I think of about. like how you can tell the story in pictures too, you know, yeah. like I think just a picture of a camera <laughs> and then the word unforced underneath it. Everybody knows <clears throat> what that means. Yep. I knew what that meant in Italy and I didn't speak Italian. I just saw a picture of a camera and figured it out. That, <laughs> <laughs> Still got a ticket, but <laughs> but I knew when I got the ticket why I got it. <laughs> uh. Mr. Colo, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so you just made the point I was going to make to Commissioner Macy. So thank you for being uh, having that genius there. <laughs> it's, a, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, so one thing that I also wanted to talk about tonight is that we have not talked about this yet is the parking lots, the uh, not the street parking. Uh, like the on the street, but the lots. Um, I've heard from business partners uh, in the communication that they got that uh, the lots um, won't be able to accept coins. Uh, you have to pay in one hour increments and they will not have the true up feature. I just want to confirm, is that correct? And I, I think, well, if it is correct, I have some comments on that. Did you say you will not accept coins? Will not accept coins? That's true. That's true. And you, you, have, to you have to buy a minimum of an hour worth of time. Okay. You can't buy 15 minutes or half hour. And can you true up? 
uh, I've heard different things from different people at MPS. I believe you are, in theory, supposed to be able to draw. But yeah. I'm, I don't know. We'll, we'll test, you we'll have test that really hard. <laughs> when you're parking on the street, you wouldn't have some visual indicator. Okay. So yeah. for me, those are all things that we, I think we would want points to be taken, as we always have. We want to make sure that we can pay in half hour increment or quarter hour increments like we always have at lots. And true enough is an absolute must, I think, For in any of these parking lots. This is why we went the system and more importantly, why we put it into the parking lots. There was an option not to pay in parking lots and it went into the lots for the, those exact reasons because it was such a great mm -hmm. advancement. If we're taking away functionality, we're taking away the ability to use coins, we're taking away the ability to pay these quarter hours, and we're taking away the best feature that this system has that's just, to me, completely unacceptable. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in a way, you don't want to treat your parking lots too different from your parking garages. You know? Um, right. Mm -hmm. Make it convenient so people use those lots. Correct. As opposed to the street parking, so you always have street parking for the short-term parkers to promote business and circulation. Okay. If there's an issue there, we can address it at this table if you guys need help from us. But yeah, I think that Commissioner Cole, so if you were to go look at the parking behind like Toyology, sure. um, just east of the parking deck, that right now is functioning like as a pay by plate lot. Okay. And I know that I've gone there to try to type in somebody's license plate number to see how much time they had left. And I was unable to do it. I think I think uh, city manager Brake is absolutely right that there's just there's not that, you know, it doesn't know where your car is or there's no like red meter sticks telling you that you're, you've been there um, too long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, and I, I expect that you're, you're not going to see the sick that you're there too yeah. long, but the apps are telling you should be able to punch in to make sure that you, you've not overstayed, you can true up. I mean, mm -hmm. and so, if not, I, I, the system doesn't belong there. So I think that is, I think if I understand it correctly, that is the distinction. If you have the app, you, 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 know, you have your plate, and I think you can probably chew up at the app, but you cannot chew up at the, um, the pay station. Okay. Like you can, on, if you park on the street, you can chew up with the app, or you can go to the pay station and chew up. I okay. don't believe there's that functionality to chew up at the pay station, but you can chew up with the app. So it's like... A little well, bit of a mixed I, bag. <laughs> I hope they can find a pay station that takes coins and lets you trip it for the, the lots. Thank you, Mr. All right, anybody else? All right, we're going to park this item for a little bit. Good job. <laughs> Just can't. All right. Well, we appreciate the effort that the team is doing, and I hope the public appreciates the effort from our police department to Judy Davids. Paul, your team, people, all the business owners, all the people who participate in the surveys, you know, it's it's going to take a little bit of work. And for 33,000 people, it worked really well. Uh, you know, for 14,000 people, it could have worked well. Some of those people, I imagine, just willfully ignored to pay. Some of them had issues. So we want to focus on the people that had issues, that were trying to do the right thing, and we make this experience uh, good, and that... We got metrics and measurements and analytics that we can look at and uh, ensure because the goal here isn't to have <coughs> more parking tickets. The goal is to have more compliance. And um, you know, if we narrow down parking tickets strictly to the people who willfully refuse to pay, good. You know, that's how it should be. Um, okay. Appreciate the time and effort you guys put into this. All right. So nothing else on parking. All right. I kind of backed into that dad joke. It's time to change gears, Mike. <laughs> I'll say between the lines. All right. Um, so this brings us to item six, which is public comment. Um, just as a reminder, we do value and rely on the public's input uh, to help make decisions up here. Now's the time set aside for the public to comment on things both on the agenda and not. Uh, there are no public hearings scheduled tonight, so this will be your only time to address the city commission. I ask that comments be directed to the commission as a whole and not to individual commissioners. If you wish to speak tonight at public comment, please wait until recognized by me, the mayor, come up to the podium. Uh, if you can give your name uh, and address for the record, that would be great. 
Uh, please be mindful that we wish to hear from anyone who wishes to speak tonight. So uh, public comment is limited to three minutes or less per individual, and there's a timer there to help you. Um, City Commission typically doesn't respond directly to questions during public comment. However, we are taking notes and we'll address those questions uh, when the agenda topic is up or if your public comment is unrelated to any agenda topics, our staff was taking notes and they follow up. Uh, and if you want to leave you know, contact information for the clerk or email us uh, as a follow-up so we can get back to you, that's um, uh, appropriate as well. Um, so with that, uh, who wishes to speak tonight first? Mr. Karlowski. Rick Karlowski, 418 Virginia. Uh, first, I'd like to just clarify something that came up in a meeting a couple of weeks back. I didn't resign from the traffic committee. My term was up, actually my third term was up, and rather than submit an application again, just be rejected, uh, I didn't turn one in. Uh, secondly, on the parking situation that I did read a whole lot of stuff on, I agree what they're doing is they're, beta, they're letting you beta test the, the, the system, which is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't know, care if it's 14,000 or 5,000, the, the issue is that these people are, a lot of them, from what I've read, are, I think they're being ticketed in unfairly, they can't use the system or whatever, and it doesn't bode well for them coming back. Uh, I look at it, it's like a, a trust issue, they don't trust the system. Trust is like virginity, once you lose it, you can never really get it back no matter how hard you try. So I would really press forward to your contractor to get his keister out here and fix this. There's no reason to have the kind of issues that I've heard today coming up for a system that they said that they threw the switch on and said was ready to go. Uh, and lastly, with regards to the, well, actually, not lastly, um, we were supposed to see the contract for the, for the winter festival before it, um, it actually launched. I was just wondering when that's gonna be on the agenda. I frankly don't know why a, a town like ours needs to pay $100,000 for us to have a, have such a festival. I would think that the organizer would be thrilled to have it in our town because of what we can draw here, but nonetheless, uh, and more importantly, um, that $100,000 could do a lot of stuff for our senior center. I mean, we just pulled out all of the, all of the uh, terminals for the internet uh, that people could browse before. The Wi-Fi is there, but there's no terminals. I think we should start reallocating some more uh, resources to the senior center. If you guys are really serious about thinking about uh, seniors, then let's put some money where the mouth is. Thank you. Thank you. All right, who's next? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Riley. Busy night. Um, Janice Wagman, Royal Oak. First of all, on the comment on the five minutes uh, parking, one of the reasons people might be pulling in for five minutes and, and leaving is if they're dropping off a senior so they don't have to walk so far and they intend to go park in the parking structure, um, I don't think they should be charged if they're using the app or whatever. Um, also, if you're not using coins, even the parking structure, you have the option of using coins, and not all seniors will use it. We'll use uh, charge cards or an app, so that's something else to keep in mind. Um, also, like Mr. Karlowski said, the WITS contract, when you passed the motion to allow the city manager and the mayor to negotiate and sign it, the motion was to bring it back to the city commission along with an explanation as to where the money was coming from. So. I think the contract itself should be a matter of public record. ARPA, you passed it you, to uh, hire Guidehouse because they supposedly could hit the ground running. You didn't put it out to bid. It's now been, I think, seven months, and we still haven't heard a thing about it, which I don't think is... I think they sold us a, a bad bill of goods if we haven't been contacted yet. The... Uh, strategic planning, we're not doing strategic planning this year, but we haven't had any reports on how well we've done on our goals and objectives for last year. The public deserves, the, deserves to know that. And once again, you sent out 15 campaign pieces of literature about seniors, and I don't see anything on the agenda again tonight about seniors. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you. 
Anybody else? Gone once, gone twice. All right, we're gonna bring the meeting to this side of the table, which brings us to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to pull anything off the consent agenda? Mr. Colo. F, please. F. Okay. Anybody else? All right, the consent agenda now consists of city commission meetings minutes for January 10th, approval of appointments committee rotation, claims from the 14th and 25th of January, approval of purchase orders, declaration, disposal of surplus property, uh, exercise option, contract modification, cap 2002, sidewalk improvements, and receive and file on action items, the November and December 2021 investment reports. Is there a motion? We have a motion by Commissioner Pruish. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Douglas. Discussion? With none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion passes. Commissioner Colo, F from the consent is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is the Delmar Avenue uh, Special Assessment District. Um, I'm just, just looking it over. Uh, there is a resolution here about a 15 year term. And I guess I would just like staff's opinion on making this a six year term, much like the rest of our sidewalk <coughs> programs. Other times we loan people money. Um, it would just seem that six years is a better use of our money. I know there's a resolution here that talks about new pavement and new streets, but I think once again, that this kind of looks like the 1979 commission was dealing with streets, not this is kind of, this is kind of special here. It's work being done only on private property, you know, not in private, but for the benefit of a single private property, not the benefit of the whole. So I guess I would look at moving that to a six year term. Anybody else? Is that a motion? I, I was looking for staff's opinion. I, I don't know. Paul, Julie, uh, yeah. Holly, whoever wants. Generally, we've always, at least since I've been at the city, gone back to this resolution from 1979, which was quite a long time ago, um, that just said it's going to be six years for sidewalks. It's going to be 15 years for really any other big improvement, water, sewer, roads, paving. Um, and so that's, that's why that is in here tonight as a recommendation. Um, in terms of shortening the period, I, I certainly wouldn't have any heartache over that. Um, my understanding is that the lawyer representing these properties also agreed that six years would be reasonable. Um, so I don't have any objection to it as long as we do it properly uh, with the resolution. Mr. Bruce? I think that the 1979 resolution, giving the longer period of time for sewer work streets, recognized that those in almost all the instances are significantly more expensive than sidewalks. Um, the sewer work, especially, and the waterline work, especially, is, and when those don't come in front of us very often, those are very, very, very expensive projects. And road concrete replacement, even though it does benefit more property, one property owner than the neighborhood at large, you're talking about very, very, very significant costs. So I have no problem with all keeping the 15-year um, payback period in place. I think it's fair, given the, the, the amount of money that we're talking about for each individual property owner. Mr. Bruce? And I'll move approval of the resolutions that are in front of us tonight. A motion by Commissioner Bruce. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Douglas. Discussion? Uh, Commissioner Dubuck. Yeah, I, I think it's reasonable to shorten the term, uh, as Commissioner Cola said, because uh, this is a compromise that the city allowed at the request of these property owners. We're fronting the cash to do something they wanted done to benefit their properties and their businesses, uh, which I think is you know, different than, than road improvement uh, or other capital works, which are really work to the benefit of the entire city. Um, Therefore, I'd rather have that capital back in our coffers sooner than later. And uh, their attorney has said that the six years is reasonable, so I'd prefer the six years. So I'll, I'll move to amend the motion uh, to reduce the payback period to six years. The motion by Commissioner Newbuck. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Hunt. Discussion on the motion? Okay. Without call for the vote, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. no. Okay. Motion passes. Now the original motion is amended to reflect the six year period. Any discussion on the motion as amended? 
All right, with that, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion passes. All right. So that gets us through the consent agenda, which brings us to item eight, which is approval of amendments to fiscal year 2021 2022 budget. And I see Ms. Rudd's here. Director Rudd. Good evening, Mayor. City Commission. There are uh, approximately eight funds um, requested to be amended this evening, um, in addition to um, some enterprise and internal service funds are on the letter and uh, we do not officially adopt those uh, funds so um, the resolution excludes those but i'll go over those briefly as well um, the general fund um, there are a couple uh, requests to increase revenue for some grants um, the most uh, significant um, item is the um, or one of the significant items is the um, cable communication software purchase uh, which will be using peg fees um, that we have in fund balance and um, also a transfer from uh, the uh, general fund parks and forestry area um, to the motor pool that was for a new supervisor position that was approved <clears throat> um, one other thing I want to mention in the general fund um, that's material is the um, use of fund balance will be increasing uh, $43,500 for a total use of fund balance um, of $8,121,530. Um, I also want to make a note that um, we have not included the estimated court revenue um, for the year, we are on pace to be under budget um, currently by about $1.5 million. Um, once we get um, uh, that number shored up a little closer, we will provide that in um, a, um, another budget amendment. Hopefully, we'll be coming soon with the ARPA monies once it's decided how um, some of the ARPA monies will be used. Um, but I wanted to um, uh, make sure that you are aware of that. Um, that'll be coming in the near future. Um, the major street fund, uh, the, the budget amendment is mostly for um, signal repairs. There's a request um, to use um, uh, 500 or excuse me, uh, $5,700 for a total use of fund balance of $615,800. Um, we do have offsetting revenue for the traffic repairs um, that'll be billed to the uh, motorist uh, insurance company that, uh, that um, actually hit the traffic signals. In the local street fund, uh, most of this uh, amendment is for the planting of 200 trees and right-of-ways. Um, there was a small grant of uh, $22,200, and uh, the, the, the balance is coming from uh, fund balance, which is $218,300 uh, $218, for a total use of fund balance in the local street fund of $2,274,570. Then the uh, DDA fund, the uh, use of fund balance is um, increasing slightly by $8,000 and uh, mostly due to some stamp stamped concrete maintenance and sealing of $72,000. And um, there's uh, some offsetting revenue for a transfer in from ABNE of $50,000. The original budget only had 50, it typically has 100,000. This is bringing up to 100,000. And then um, also $14,000 in revenues from the Consumer Energy Our Town program. The library fund, um, there's a request to increase expenditures by $51,890. And that is to hire uh, two new municipal clerk one positions for approximately uh, six months in addition to some uh, other um, un unexpected expenditures um, for building security and uh, moving expenses. 
the CDBG fund. Um, that is increasing uh, by uh, $1,434,930. Most of that revenue that is increasing is a carryover from the prior year. On the expenditure side, uh, the, the capital outlay um, for uh, $1.3 million um, carryover from the prior year for the Lawson Park traffic diverters. In addition, um, there's uh, $265,000 for COVID testing program, and then um, $17,300 for hotel vouchers in lieu of uh, shelter closures. For the Senior Citizens Fund, requesting to take uh, 30, $30,620 from fund balance for uh, furnace replacement. And then finally, in the resolution is the miscellaneous grants fund. Um, expenditure increase of $47,100. And that is from a combination of a grant for $15,000 and a transfer in from the library fund, which is their portion, their share of the grant of $32,100. Then the third page of the commission letter um, provides a handful of other funds that are not included in the resolution, but they're um, enterprise funds and um, internal service funds. And uh, just some quick comments, just uh, for updates. Um, the A, B, and E um, request is the other side um, of the DDA request, the $50,000 moving that over there. The water and sewer fund, um, we got a um, an assessment notification um, very late in the budget process last year for the Red Run drain um, for $184,600. So that's included there. And then addition, uh, additionally, $37,500 uh, for the new supervisor vehicle and um, $77,850 for some uh, hydro vacuum uh, excavation equipment. Um, the information service fund, there is no increase in any bottom lines, but um, just wanted to uh, provide information that we're uh, doing a swap or would like to swap out um, some uh, budget line items. Um, originally, there was um, money for a disaster recovery solution. The IT manager doesn't believe that he will get to that. It's been in the budget for quite a few years now. However, um, this, the court um, would like a uh, security system replaced. And um, so those two things will be swapping out, but no increase in the bottom line. Um, then the uh, motor pool, um, the, uh, there's a capital request for um, an emergency generator that uh, went before commission, um, I believe a couple uh, meetings ago. And then um, on the revenue side, it shows the um, transfers in from uh, the various departments for the new supervisor vehicles. And then finally, um, a note that um, I wanna make on the auto parking. Um, as soon as we um, have a uh, better feel as to where we are with revenues, um, hopefully the next amendment that's coming forward, um, you'll see something there, um, revenues are very low in that fund again this year, like it was last year. So um, once we uh, get our arms around that, um, you'll, you'll see that in the next budget amendment, hopefully. So, well, that concludes my comments. Um, if there's any questions or concerns, um, please let me know. Questions for Ms. Rowe? Commissioner Colo. Yeah, I'm sorry, we had a reference to a $1.5 million deficit over at the, um, the courthouse, but there wasn't any context behind that. Um, and I, I think that it gets a little alarmist when we talk about numbers like that without an actual report that talks about what might be going on or some, um, some information behind it. So can we expand on that or talk about a future meeting perhaps? Because there's an issue that needs to be taken and this commission has been very uh, responsible in making sure that we are doing our job with the city's money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'll just uh, a, a brief comment. The case um, numbers are down over there. They're very similar to last year's pace, which those revenues were down as well. And um, the case numbers are very different from two years ago. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, 
just for, for some initial information, but certainly could get you um, some more details <clears throat> on the caseload. That's something ARPA might affect? Uh, absolutely. So okay. um, if I may, uh, since the question was asked, and it's unfortunate the person that asked the question is not here to hear the answer, uh, next meeting you'll, you will hear a presentation about ARPA. Why haven't we talked about that earlier? Well, it's been, I believe, about two weeks now that the U.S. Treasury has come out with final guidelines. The other half of that is the infrastructure bill that is a separate pot of money. Um, so it's, it's timely to do that right now. Um, and the, the consultants that will be discussing um, that was bid out by Oakland County, by the way, um, and if anyone wants to see that information, I'd be happy to provide that. Uh, but uh, so they will be talking about the, the most significant change in the ARPA regulations is accounting for the, the revenue loss. Before there was a, a complex process that you had to, to go through. And um, uh, now if we just simply want to choose what they call uh, a standard amount out of that amount, $10 million can be applied towards revenue loss. But, but actually the calculation, that the guide house has made, it's, it's slightly higher. So we'll, we'll talk much more in depth. That, Commissioner Cole, that doesn't answer your question, but I wanted to, to get into, since the mayor broached the, the topic of ARPA, where, where does that fit into the equation? And so now it's time appropriate based on you know, having what the final determination is. And, and as we look at uh, infrastructure projects, you know, what, what areas should they, they come out of, so. Thank you, and actually, Mr. Mayor, um, continue on that for just a moment, Mr. Gray. Yes. There's, uh, there's money, and I see Mr. Murphy here, but I was expecting to ask any questions on him. Um, there is money about CBDG funds that we had used last year for emergency spending. Would that, can we include a conversation on that during the ARPA discussions about what funds might be left over um, that could still be used for recovery and relief efforts? We, we can, and we give us more time to prepare. Guy yeah, House isn't did, actively involved in that, but certainly it would yeah. give uh, uh, Mr. Murphy to specific questions that, yeah. that you'd like to address. So absolutely, and he's shaking his head, and so in two weeks that we can provide that. Uh, or a month, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. it doesn't necessarily, just yeah. when we get to it. Thank you. Just two good points on that. We have ARPA dollars helping us out because this mm -hmm. is a direct result of the of the pandemic, but we also have caseloads down, which yeah. is typically a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, sure. hopefully there's less activity out there versus less enforcement, um, which is not a bad thing to have. So probably correlates with us being one of the safest communities in the state. All right, anybody else? Commissioner Douglas? You do need a motion on Yeah, the there's a resolution here to move forward. Yeah, I move the resolution. We have a motion by Commissioner Douglas, second by Commissioner Dubuck. Discussion? All right, with none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Rudd. This brings us to item nine, which is approval of license agreement 25519 Woodward Avenue. And there's Mr. Murphy. Good evening. I'm gonna bring up some images on the screen here to help our conversation. Now, several months ago, the applicant received site plan and special land use approval from the Planning Commission in order to convert uh, the building that you see on the screen in front of you to a daycare facility. And this site is located on the west side of Woodward Avenue, it's just north of the zoo. A day for daycare facilities are required to have a fenced outdoor play area. And uh, in this case, the applicant is asking to utilize the city's adjacent public alley to fulfill that. And the, that was a contingency of the Planning Commission's approval. The, the approved site plan noted the use of the city's alley. So they are here in front of you tonight to seek approval uh, for a license agreement to use that for their outdoor play area. This segment of this block of Woodward Avenue does have a paved alley. Um, this is a view of the parking lot adjacent to the petitioner and the property owner's uh, site. There is a paved alley that extends to the north 
However, if we look to the south, uh, directly behind this building, it's been closed off with a fence and it has been used in the past by previous tenants for an outdoor area associated with uh, the previous business, business. So the previous tenant had a license agreement to utilize the city's public alley. That prior license agreement does not transfer to the current applicant. So they here, are here in front of you to seek a license agreement for use as an outdoor play area. And the license agreement has specific language in it, which obviously indemnifies the city in claims that may arise out of the use of the alley. Um, I'll note that the applicant does have and maintains an existing daycare facilities uh, two doors south of this location. And she went through the exact same process in 2018 uh, for the same exact circumstance to utilize the public alley directly behind that building for an, the required outdoor play area. Uh, and the applicant and the property owner are here today to answer any questions that you might have about uh, their request. Okay, questions for Mr. Murphy. Do they consider using the zoo as the fence and cage? <laughs> I'm sure some days it feels like a zoo inside. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions for the petitioner? It seems pretty straightforward, mm -hmm. especially, I mean, you're not cutting off any traffic or causing any issues. It's just a, probably say a higher, better use. Uh, you know, we definitely need to think about um, childcare these days, especially with everything going on. Um, Commissioner Colo. I move approval of the uh, resolution in front of us for the license agreement. We have a motion by Commissioner Colo. We have a second by uh, Commissioner Pruch. Mm -hmm. Discussion? All right, which now I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thanks for sitting through the meeting. Sorry you had to <laughs> go through that whole parking discussion. <laughs> you know. Okay. Hopefully you parked in the deck tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, that brings us to the last item on the agenda, which is city manager request to fill executive vacancies and authorization for recruitment uh, services agreement. Yes, so this is a late addition to the agenda um, as, as I relate to you that the finance director uh, intends to retire, um, but will still be assisting us in a part-time capacity through the, the end of June. Uh, nevertheless, um, especially on that vacancy, I would like to start as soon as possible uh, an executive recruitment. So we have bid out before when we did the city attorney recruitment. At that time, we accepted bids. Uh, it's less than two years ago, and, and we already have an established working relationship with GovHR, and they have materials about talking about the, the community and whatnot. Um, the cost of the, the recruitment all in is 21000 uh, there may be aspects that will be taken in uh, through the Human Resources Department, but I, I would respectfully ask the, the higher end. Um, so we had the, the latitude. Uh, we're getting into the, uh, the busier season of, in my office as well, uh, you know, preparing the budget. So my hope is that if we uh, end up selecting an external candidate, probably be approximately about six months from now. Um, and so the sooner that they have that on board, the, the better. So uh, as indicated, it was, um, I was told that the attrition policy does apply to department director positions. So I'm in the process as I'm collecting information about the, the um, chief of police and, and um, um, making you aware of um, uh, what outreach efforts that I'm making internally. And there's context that um, that you have provided me with other stakeholders that can give some input. Um, it's, I'm treating this differently um, in that, um, uh, that I do have the, the ability if we just forego the, the recruitment um, and, and still weighing that out, but it's just, a, especially the feedback that I'm receiving internally in the department, it's, it's voting very favorable uh, to just uh, uh, move forward. Um, with, with the arrangements that we have right now. But I'll, when those announcements are made, I'll, I'll make that known and, 
uh, go from there. But these are city manager appointments and, and want to make sure that we comply with their own policies. And so I'm asking you also the, the authorization to fill the, the, the chief of police position. Um, so these both are, are equally important in going about these entirely differently, but are just vital to the organization mm -hmm. uh, with the, the roles that they perform. So present to you a, a resolution of the authorization to enter into the agreement with uh, GovHR in um, uh, authorizing the, um, the appropriate individuals, the mayor and the city clerk to sign that agreement and, uh, and to move forward and to move quickly on that recruitment, so. Any questions? Uh, Commissioner Douglas. So is there, would there, should there be a dollar amount on this? I mean, the document doesn't specify, you mentioned. Good, good point, yes, you're, you're correct, because at the time I wrote this, I did not have the dollar amount, and that's since came, so thank you. The, yeah, I would say at an, an amount not to exceed $21,000. Okay, thank you. Okay, for the finance director. Right? Correct, right, for that position only. And I, I would I would move approval of the proposal here, um, with the addition of a cap of twenty one thousand dollars on the recruiting position for the finance director. Motion by Commissioner Douglas. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Prush. Just clarification on the motion here. We're talking mm -hmm. about authorizing you to fill both positions. Correct. Okay. Because right now technically we have an interim chief, mm -hmm. and, yes. and to to figure out that, and then on the finance director, uh, Ms. Rhodes retiring. So we're gonna fill that position and go to GovHR, uh, not to exceed 21,000 uh, to recruit that position and within hopefully a number of months we have that filled. Correct. Um, and then for the chief, you may have a different solution in place that you'll work personally on that position. Yes, and motivated to, uh, um, uh, I don't wanna apply six months, it's, uh, certainly with the chief's position, I'm, I'm hoping by mid-month in February of uh, finalizing that and making an announcement, so. Okay, making a recommendation here. Okay. Yeah, so. All right, um, okay, so, and then and then ultimately we would ratify, you know, whatever picks you have, or? I don't believe so. I believe it's the, the city manager's appointment, um, okay. but uh, the employment agreements, because it's uh, really the, the only three of us that are ratified by the commission, is the manager, attorney, and clerk, whereas the the, the directors report to me. But I, what I'm unclear of is that employment agreements would have to be ratified. I would not be able to enter into an employment right. agreement. That yeah. would have to be brought uh, to the commission. Right. So, uh, but uh, uh, I could be misspeaking. But uh, uh, that's that's the way I understand it. So, but if it's something that needs commission ratification, by all means, so it's whatever the, the, the charter dictates what the, the procedure is, so. Commissioner Bruch? Um I, I just wanna make sure that the public understands that, that this is a necessary step, especially in filling the finance director's position. Correct. Um, it, it, normally you would think, oh, there's 50 million CPAs in the Detroit metropolitan area, this ought to be easy to fill. But people don't understand that municipal finance is a completely different animal, totally. There are, there are numerous state statutes that apply only to municipalities and, and finance, tax laws, um, retirement benefit laws, a whole lot of stuff that doesn't apply to any other, any other aspect of accounting. It only applies to municipalities. And so this is a very, very specific, very specific um, set of skills that are necessary for this position. And, and, and they are not a dime a dozen. Um, really, really good ones are hard to find. So the, it's, it's totally understandable why we need some assistance uh, with somebody like GovHR to fill that position um, because it's, it's, a very, it's a very technical position um, and, and not all CPAs can do it for sure right. because of the nature of what you have to do and your obligations and your legal obligations that you have to perform. So. Um, it's, it's totally necessary. Yeah, if I may add, I would uh, entirely concur with uh, uh, Commissioner Perouche. Additionally, by using a recruiter uh, protects the anonymity of the candidates, where someone that, that may be reluctant of you know, looking for a job, and you know, granted, individuals are changing jobs. If anything, what I've heard is 
Um, uh, there, you are absolutely spot on. I, I would not be surprised if we just don't get that many finalists, and I don't want that to be a discouraging thought, but uh, it's just, um, um, it is such a specialized field, and for those that they have the training and qualifications that would move forward, even for you know the consideration from the city manager's office, um, and it'll be a tough one to recruit. That's, mm -hmm. that's I'm, I remain optimistic, but it's, you know we have to be prepared for that. So. I'll just add to Commissioner Perusha's point. Simply, FASB is what most CPAs follow, you know, like accounting you learn in high school and college. Um, GASB is what we typically use here, which is ever-changing. Completely different. When I was first elected, I was running the Treasury and FP&A for an organization, and coming here, it took me even a little bit, <laughs> knowing the ins and outs of the city, to really understand how we do the budget. Um, and, um, you know, folks that do it really, really well in other communities that have that experience that, you know, they're, they're taken care of and there's sometimes resistance to bring them over because, quite frankly, it's even though you're doing the same mentality, you've got to learn a whole new set of budgets and everything like that. It's not like you start day one and the machine's humming. And so there are some just it's the nature of finance positions. Uh, so I can't underscore what Commissioner Proof said enough. It's going to be from personal experience. It's going to be. Uh, a limited pool we can pick from. Right. I think we'll Commissioner Macy? So I think uh, Commissioner Perush and the Mayor and uh, City Manager Brink have underscored the importance of having a recruiter for this, and I think I do agree with that. But the fact that we're moving so fast to go with GovHR, and part of the reason because they've, they've worked with us in the past and they have experience with us, I really hope they can get moving quickly, and we, it won't be six months. I mean, six months seems like a really long time to be hiring a position. And I understand that there is, there's a lot of, it's challenging to hire right now. Um, but I just, I, I hope we're not going to go to HR and say you have six months. I hope right. they're, no. I hope they're saying let's, no. let's no. get this done as fast as we can. Right, right. Yeah, that, that's on the, the longest, uh, um, sorry, didn't do my microphone. That, that's the longest projection that I have. And especially um, coming from two out-of-staters and, you know, when you factor in relocation and, you know, we can both uh, Mr. Leal and myself, we can relay kind of anecdotally, you know, that, that extends out that, that period of time. I think, um, you know, my, my hope is that, I, I, again, I want to preface, I, I don't want to discount any internal applications that we've received, but if we go with an internal candidate that perhaps in the, you know, the, the metro area that that's, you know, we could seek someone out that's qualified, but time will tell. So I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I would like to have that position secured much sooner. And that's why I'm, I'm acting immediately. Anybody else? Okay. Anyone want to make a motion? Do we make a motion? Do we make something? Sorry, on the table, yeah, right? Uh, yeah. Commissioner Douglas. Yeah, that's right. Commissioner Douglas made it. Um, okay. Without any discussion, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. All right. That brings us to the end of the agenda. Uh, notwithstanding anything for the betterment of our fine community, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, moved by Commissioner Cole. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Dubuck. Discussion? All right, with Donald, call for the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passes. Adjourned. Aye.